Hello, welcome to Humble Brag. My name is Nate Mandel, and I am glad to be back in the studio. Hopefully the quality reflects it. Today we're going to talk about nihilism and Mike Tyson. But before we get to that, allow me to pay tribute to Mike with the following. Mike Tyson is a really dynamic and interesting individual. Me and my brother used to be obsessed with some of the things he would say. We'd laugh about it endlessly. Mike Tyson quotes are some of the funniest out there. For example, I think it was Mike who said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Something along those lines. <laughs> of course, there's the famous, you know, I'll eat your children rant. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. He's just a very funny dude, and obviously he's been through a lot. And in his older years, clearly has healed to a certain degree and come to peace with life, maturity, responsibility, and it appears things that matter. Although, as we'll see soon, that he often says things that diametrically oppose that. So Mike recently had a boxing match with Jake Paul, and it was not an exciting match. But you know what's even more silly and hilarious than that? The way that the world reacts. People really are stupid. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And social media makes people even stupider. There are thousands of videos right now about Mike Tyson, about the disappointment regarding the fight, speculation whether it was scripted or not. It's comical to watch an entire society throw an emotional tantrum because... Mike Tyson lost the fight and because the fight wasn't interesting. I mean, you got to use common sense. Mike clearly has said prior to the fight, it's all showbiz. He didn't hate Jake Paul. There was no real beef there. In fact, he has said that Jake is helping boxing out by bringing it back to life by selling tickets. So right, he understood that it's all business and he appreciated Jake for that. So to get all worked up now, as if there's like some big conspiracy behind it, makes no sense. There's no logic to the behavior, the societal behavior, when these types of things happen. It's common sense. They didn't hate each other. Mike is almost 60 years old. It's always, always about the money. So if you bought into it in a certain way, thinking that it wasn't about the money, sucks to be you. Use your goddamn brains. I watched the fight. To me, it looked very simple. I don't think there's a whole conspiracy. He came in looking pretty sharp. The first two rounds, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, he's going to beat Jake Paul. And by the third round, he looked, I don't, I don't know if I would say gassed out, but it looked like he didn't have the energy to carry the fight. It just really looked that simple. I don't know why that's so hard for people to comprehend. A 58-year-old who has health issues, who's been in the hospital like hours or days before the fight, was having a hard time keeping the pace. Now, would he have kept the pace the all, all of the rounds the way he did the first two? I think he would have won easily. But perhaps age does get to you the way that, you know, science tells you it does, the way that reality tells you it does. But forget about that. Isn't the human response to what took place so immature think about it we're in a society of people that understand business we understand that it was all about selling we understand that he's 58 years old we understand all this stuff and then he goes in it turns out to be not a great fight and everyone's like oh my god this was nuts like the whole world is turned over because it was not a great fight like why do we even react to this type of stuff that way? I don't, I don't understand it. It's beyond me why, why humans behave the way that they do. You know, who remembers Conor McGregor versus uh, Floyd Mayweather? It's what it is. It's all about hype. It's all about selling tickets. Whether the fight turns out to be a good fight or not is a side point. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Another thing is the anger and animosity that people come in against Jake Paul. So they're... they're 
it, it's so emotional, it's so childish, rooting for Mike, not because it's Mike. Everyone, everyone wants Mike to win, right? Everyone loves Mike Tyson. Cool as bad as boxer, right? Uh, Mac, you know, I used to call him Mac Truck. You just you don't want to get in front of him. But there, there, there's so much hate and animosity against Jake Paul because of his demeanor, because of the way he behaves, because of the fact that he comes from being a social media person and, and a jokester. There's so much hate. Stop with the hate. Like, God, get over it. What don't people understand? Anyone could become anything if they dedicate themselves to it. I've discussed in the past that we don't always want to become, you know, not everyone should be everything, but if they so seek to, they can. So it doesn't matter what he was in the past. Yes, you could drop everything, dedicate yourself to something and become good at it. Doesn't mean he's the best, doesn't mean anything. Oh gosh, cheerleading. So immature, but it's one thing if it's 15 and 18 year olds cheerleading. You're watching online grown men whining and crying about a goddamn boxing match. <laughs> Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about nihilism. Why and why and how it relates to Mike Tyson. But before I go there, one more thing. Mike Tyson is a very interesting character. And he, one of the things he's learned to become is very honest. Honest about his feelings. Although he showed signs of that all throughout his uh, history. That's why he has the most awkward interviews sometimes. His responses are like shocking. They're shocking because he just answers truthfully the way he feels that throws people off because we live in such a fake world. It's a mirage. So everybody's putting up a front, putting on a, a good look. And when Mike just acts himself and just expresses truth the way he feels, people are thrown off by it. I once watched a interview with him where he was talking about, so the, the interviewer asked him, I think why he doesn't have a phone, a smartphone. And I don't remember the words he used, but he said something along the lines of, it'll make him fall. He was referring to uh, pornography, meaning he'll, he'll fall in those areas. And it was so inspiring to hear that from a non-Jewish, non-religious, I don't know if he's not religious, maybe he's Muslim, I don't know. But to hear that from a secular person, as far as we're concerned, because it's like, you know, Jewish people are obsessed with Shmirat Habrit. And we don't even speak so openly about this stuff, right? Here is you know, a boxer who's talking about not having a smartphone because it'll make him do those things. Let's pull up the video. I don't have a phone. Because my phone, oh, my phone is my lower self. Oh, shit. I might look at porn. So I, I'm conscious of my lower self. So I know I don't need a phone. What? So you're like, fuck the phone. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I want to conquer the world. And I know I can't conquer the world unless I conquer myself. That's Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson saying this. And we have a difficulty talking about these problems in the religious world. We have to learn from this. We have to learn that everyone struggles with this stuff, whether they talk about it or not, whether they hide it or not. When you talk about it, to be able to confront it and fight it. No fap, meaning not masturbating, not going on porn, has become quite a movement in our times. Um, and there are actively communities and groups, if people struggle with this stuff, how to combat it. And obviously you have to surround yourself around friends who strengthen you in these areas, not drag you down. You wanna be around people who I call, give you peer motivation, not peer pressure. So if you hang around people who joke about sex and talk about girls and sexualize everything that moves and doesn't, then automatically you're going to be stooped into that world of lust, fantasy, and short-term pleasure. But if you hang around people who are more intellectually capable, more spiritually aware, have good values, are focusing on family and life, then that'll give you strength to not waste your time with fleeting pleasures. But Mike, back to Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson is sometimes so honest that he says things that are a bit more questionable, not to take away from what he feels and thinks. It's just that he has such an influence. So you need to contend with the things that he says so that people don't get the wrong impressions. In this next video, Mike Tyson essentially expresses nihilistic viewpoints to a young girl. Let's watch it. So after such a successful career, what type of legacy would you like to leave behind when it's all said and done? Well, I don't know. I don't believe in the word legacy. I just think that's another word for ego. 
Legacy doesn't mean nothing. That's just some word everybody grabbed on to. Someone said that word and everyone grabbed on the word, so now it's used every five seconds. It means absolutely nothing to me. I'm just passing through. I'm going to die, and it's going to be over. Who cares about a legacy after that? What a, what a big ego. So I'm going to die. I want people to think that I'm this. I'm great. I'm No, we're nothing. We're just dead. We're dust. We're absolutely nothing. Our legacy is nothing. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. That is something that I have not heard before, someone say that as an answer. Can you really imagine somebody say, I want my legacy to be this way when I get dead? Why do you want somebody, do you think somebody really wants to think about you? How, how, what's the that I think, I want people to think about me when I'm gone. Who the fuck cares about me when I'm gone? Well, my kids, maybe, or grandkids. Who yeah, the true. fuck cares? And again, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Funny and depressing, right? It is both funny and sad at the same time. It's nice that Mike's being Mike and he's being himself. I don't think it's appropriate to speak this way to a child. Even though I do believe that education means spe uh, teaching your children. Um, I speak like an adult to my children. I believe that's what teaching is. I don't believe hiding and reframing stories is what education is. However, there's a cap and a ceiling to that. It is good to try to stay away from profanity. But more than that, if you have views, which by the way, these views that he's sharing are nihilistic. If you have such views and by common standards, they are doom and gloom. You don't want to give these views over to children because it's not fair to them. What do I mean? Well, just because you have a, a grim view of the world, that doesn't mean that you should push that view onto young generations. Having a grim view of life and of this world when you're young could lead to feelings of worthlessness and pointlessness, which could then lead a, a, a child as they grow up into teenage and, and young adults to things like suicide, heaven forbid, depression, because and drugs, of course, because if, it, if everything's BS and there's no meaning or purpose to anything, then why not indulge in these things or why not end it? So let me just read off of Wikipedia for a moment for those who don't know what nihilism essentially is. In philosophy, nihilism is any viewpoint or a family of views that rejects generally accepted fundamental aspects of human existence namely knowledge, morality, or meaning. There have been different nihilist positions, including that human values are baseless, that life is meaningless, that knowledge is impossible, or that some other highly regarded concepts are in fact meaningless or pointless. The term was popularized by Ivan Turgenev, and more specifically by his character Bazarov in the novel fathers and sons. And then it goes on to explain that the term has become very broad. So there's debate whether it encompasses a cohesive philosophy or, or if anything that has nihilistic ingredients kind of falls under the umbrella. And indeed, that's how it is used in our society. The term that is. Anytime somebody expresses or has an opinion that is by nature um, expressing ideas such that life is purposeless, this world is purposeless, anything is meaningless, all that, it kind of falls under that umbrella. These are very dangerous views to hold. They are not correct. They do not align with truth. They oppose religious outlook. They oppose uh, Jewish thought, and they oppose pretty much uh, most thoughts. They, they oppose pretty much most schools of thought. Um, besides for some areas and like nominalism, skepticism, philosophical pessimism, so on and so forth. But the majority of the world and the general consensus does not align with nihilistic views. Nihilism is wrong on two fronts, the practical front and the philosophical front. On the practical front, everything about life is the opposite of purposeless. Everything we do has purpose, or at least it should. In fact, the things that we do that don't have purpose are the things that destroy us, like sitting and watching TikToks, scrolling through social media day and night. That's purposeless. 
that destroys us. But everything that we do that yields net positive value is the opposite of nihilistic. It has deep meaning and purpose. We laugh for a purpose. We hug for a purpose. We love for a purpose. We get married. We have children. Everything we do has purpose. We plant seeds in the ground, agriculture for a purpose. We build technology for a purpose. On that level alone, not even getting into the philosophical endgame ideas, on that level alone, nihilism is out the window because everything has purpose. Birds and wildebeest migrate for a purpose. It rains for a purpose. It's windy for a purpose. It's cold for a purpose. It's hot for a purpose. Everything is infused with purpose. The three principles of Amuna, of a complete faith, are that Hashem does everything, God does everything, everything that God does is for a purpose, and everything that happens is for our ultimate good. So if you learn the principles of faith, all three of its pillars diametrically oppose nihilism. But again, we don't have to get philosophical about it. Let's just be practical. If you're a mature, healthy human being, what things during the day in your life do you do for no purpose? Hopefully very little bit. And that's because the world is infused with purpose. Purpose is what drives absolutely everything. Purpose is what essentially allows evolution to take place. Survival of the fittest, think about that. What got us to here? Purpose following the things that had purpose got us to where we are we have a strong intellect and intelligence because we followed the path of purpose so to speak so nihilism on a practical level makes utterly no sense and on a philosophical level we are dealing with the same logic really it trickles down so the purpose that i just explained on a practical level you understand on a practical level, but really it trickles down from philosophical, idealistic, and truth-based, God-based purpose. That's why everything is purposeful down here. Whether we understand the purpose or not is a different story. With time, with science, with exploration, we come to learn about the deep, deep purpose in everything, every function, every faculty, why this happens, why that happens, how things work, how the universe works how there's a connection to sea turtle and stardust. Just absolutely fascinating stuff. But that's because we search and we search and we search. But just because we haven't figured out the purpose of every individual thing doesn't mean that it doesn't have. As I explained, the opposite is true. Everything that endures, it endures because it has purpose. Philosophically, there's also great purpose. Otherwise, it's not logical nor conceivable that a world this beautiful and majestic would be created. If everything is for naught, if it's all meaningless, if legacy is meaningless, if doing good deeds are meaningless, if living a happy life is meaningless, then what value do these things have? None whatsoever. It makes no sense. Mike Tyson has children. Why would you bring a child into this world if you carry nihilistic beliefs? It makes no sense. There's no logic to it. Now, you might say that when you were younger, you didn't have such beliefs, you had children, and now you got older and wiser. Now you understand that it's all BS, it's all meaningless, we die, there's nothing, boom. I would venture everyone to take caution in this area and not push these ideas onto your children. It has the potential to destroy them. I can respect that you've come to such beliefs. And these are the narratives that you tell yourself and perhaps coping mechanisms. Who knows? There's a, many different reasons why you might come to the conclusion that life has no meaning and it's all BS. Don't put it on your children because if you're wrong or even if you're right, you don't want to rob them of a spiritually rich life. I used to tell my brother who was an atheist that even if it was correct and that there was no purpose there's no afterlife, there's nothing. I would very likely still live this life. I believe I would still live this life. Why? Because it has so much purpose. It yields so much goodness. And this is what people need to understand about living a religious life, living a life full of purpose and meaning. 
is just that. It infuses you with meaning and purpose. That is how valuable believing in meaning and purpose is. That even if it wasn't truth, which it appears to be truth, luckily we could use our brains, we could explore the depths of philosophical ideas and come to a determination that it does seem to be the most plausible explanation for all of this. But even if we weren't able to do that, it still yields the fruits that it does. And those fruits are magnificent. As such, nihilism is out the window. Take caution when hearing people talk about these types of ideas and these types of viewpoints. They might sound cool and trendy. It's not the truth. It's the opposite of truth. And it requires deep spiritual understanding to understand why that is. But you don't have to have every piece of knowledge along the path to understanding that this is truth. Trust those much, much wiser than you. Thank you for tuning in. Peace and love. Leave a like and subscribe. Subscribe.